This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Monday, April the 22nd, 2019. It's the feast day of two popes, Saints Soter and Caius. Soter was pope from 167 to 174 AD. He declared for the first time that marriage as a sacrament required a priest or bishop to witness and formally bless the ceremony. He was also the one who established Easter as a festival in Rome. The other pope, Caius, was pope from 283 to 296 AD. He established the traditional minor orders, saying that no one could be a bishop unless he was first officially named porter, that is the keeper of the keys, then lector, then exorcist, which was less about projectile vomiting green soup and more about baptism, then acolyte, a.k.a. altar boy, then subdeacon, then deacon, then priest. He also created a map of the city to organize the deacon's area of responsibility. As to why these two entirely disconnected popes share a feast day, I can't find anything at all. Caius died today in 296, but Soter doesn't have any firm dates that we know about. At any rate, both were good popes, both worked hard, and both are probably worth asking for their prayers. In an entirely different camp, today is the birthday of the German philosopher and one of the major players in the so-called Enlightenment era, Immanuel Kant. Born 1724 in Königsberg, Prussia, Kant found himself in a pickle. Despite important writing and thinking from René Descartes and Francis Bacon and Baruch Spinoza, the Enlightenment had never made a real effort to unseat the metaphysics of St. Thomas Aquinas. Every new paper, every new book had really just sidestepped major questions and logical holes that Aquinas and his scholastic philosophy answered. But Kant wasn't really okay with that. He wanted an intact solution that didn't have big glaring holes. So in 1781, he set out to plug those holes. He wrote The Critique of Pure Reason. In 865 pages, Kant made up a ton of words. Remember that the Enlightenment was ultimately an effort to redesign all of philosophy in a human-centric way. Ancient and classical philosophy was the world around us centered. What is everything made of? How does it work? How can we talk about it? Christian philosophy was God-centric. How does the world exist in relation to God? How do we exist in relation to the divine? The so-called enlightenment, though, was about making man the measure of all things. How do I know that I exist? I think, therefore I am. Kant then, by creating a mountain of vocabulary and stealing his fair share from Augustine, managed to rewrite the science of metaphysics, which is the study of existence itself, in human-centric terms. Of course, there are still mile-wide holes in his thinking, but he gave moderns the language to pretend that those holes don't exist. Kant is arguably the single most important philosopher in the so-called Enlightenment. He died in his hometown at the age of 79 in 1804. Finally, today in 1904, J. Robert Oppenheimer was born in New York City. He was the son of wealthy German immigrants who moved to the U.S. in 1904. He was a polymath, excelling in a dozen fields. He entered Harvard and focused on chemistry. His emphasis evolved, though, to physics. And in 1924, he moved along to Cambridge, where he connected with the top theoretical physicists of the day. He was arguably the top theoretician in physics in the world at the time, despite only publishing five papers. His fame came from his leadership of the Manhattan Project, from which came the atomic bombs dropped on Japan to end World War II. Oppenheimer regretted his work and famously quoted from the Bhagavad Gita, Now I am become death the destroyer of worlds. He's remembered as the father of the atomic bomb. He died in 1967 in Princeton as one of the greatest scientific minds in history. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.